John Coltrane on tenor sax, starting us off with Blue Train. And he's got a lot of really incredible musicians with him, including Lee Morgan on trumpet, Curtis Fuller on trombone, Kenny Drew on piano, Paul Chambers on bass, and Philly Joe Jones on drums. This is a classic from 1957 from his album uh, Blue Train. It's the title track of that album. This is Lead Stories. I'm Eutrice Lead. And today uh, I'm going to ask you to put on your analytical hats. Why? Because we deserve an explanation and some answers about something that happened this week that just got a, a nanosecond worth of, of attention. Uh, House Speaker Nancy Pelosi had held over President Donald Trump's head the possibility of impeachment for his incompetent leadership of the country and the endemic corruption that became synonymous with his administration. But two days ago, the Democratic leader did an about face. She didn't think impeachment of Trump was, quote, worth it, she said. Representative Adam Schiff, chairman of the House Intelligence Committee, has had a, a similar epiphany. After following Trump's trail for months, saying how dirty it was, he too now says that impeaching Trump is not a good idea. Neither Pelosi nor Schiff is saying what exactly has caused this sudden change of mind. But I have faith in our listeners. And I believe that even without any explanation, as to how this suddenly came to an end, this impeachment uh, drill came to a sudden end and with no real explanation to simply say, well, it's not worth it. Um, and the only elaboration was that it was going to be more divisive than it was going to be beneficial to the nation. That's not quite an explanation, you see. Something has happened here, and that's the question I pose to you. What has happened? What has caused this about-face? What do you think? 
could possibly have happened to have both Nancy Pelosi and Adam Schiff, both very critical of Trump, and both previously uh, entertaining, at least from our point of view as observers, the idea of now mounting the effort to uh, impeach, now saying that, forget about it, let's move on. <laughs> well, in politics, that, that just doesn't happen like that. Something is accounting for this sudden about face, and I think we ought to explore it at 888-874-4888. What could possibly have happened or what might still be happening that accounts for this dramatic change, this dramatic, a dramatic turn of events where two major leaders of the party who were sending signals that this would be the next phase of the battle with the Trump administration and with the president himself, they're now saying, ah, we don't think so, but we'll move on. And without giving an explanation, that makes sense. And besides that, the dynamic tells us a lot. Because how is it that after all these other legislators were talking about impeachment, only two, just two of them, Pelosi and Schiff, were all that was needed to just shut everything down. And we haven't seen or heard of any kind of objection. I mean, how did they get the power to counter the, the feelings and the commitments of all other Democratic leaders who were uh, championing impeachment? Now, I'm not saying that Yes, they should impeach or no, they should impeach. I'm saying only that we saw something developing. We had quite a, a, a large group of Democrats leading toward impeachment. And that included the two who ended up saying, ah, forget it. Something stinks. What do you think it might be? Peter from New Jersey, we'll start with you. Hello, you're on the air. Good morning. Oh, good afternoon, Teresa. Hello. Very... Hello. Yes. How are you doing? Listening. I'm listening to you. I'm That's fine. Good. I'm gonna make I'm gonna make this real short. The deep state and the Trump administration, or well, this whole thing has come to a truce. Um they got some dirt on them. That's the only thing. I'm going to make this short and I'm going to leave the rest to you. They got dirt on them. They right, who? So um, the Trump administration. Okay. But how does it explain Pelosi and Schiff telling America and the world that this push that was being made for impeachment is really not viable or valid. Like I said, they came to a truce. They had the dirt on them. And um, that would include the Clintons and all of them. You go see a lot of stuff just disappear. That's all I have to say. All right. But thank you right. very much. Thank, thank you very much for calling in. Tony from Orlando. What explains this mysterious about face? In your Hi, Hi, Idris. Hi, uh, Idris. Thanks for taking my call. Thank you for calling. Um, well, I believe that the whole uh, premise for the uh, original uh, reason that uh, they were going to impeach Trump was uh, due to the claim that uh, he colluded with Russians um, to win the presidency. 
Mueller's report's about to come out, and there's not going to be any evidence to back that up. So basically, they're going back to the drawing board. So what they're going to do is they're not – the reason they're retracting from the uh, uh, impeachment is because, like, you keep talking about – uh, whatever you want to make a claim on something, you have to come with your evidence. You have to be prepared to come and show forth a uh, a plan. You have to have a plan. And they don't have the plan in place to produce uh, the necessary votes for impeachment right now. So what they're going to do is, see, Adam, and, and it's, it's surprising that you said Adam Schiff also. I, I heard Nancy Pelosi uh, say Say it, but I, I was not aware that Adam Schiff was. And Adam Schiff is somebody that has been digging into Trump since Trump got into office. Now, Adam Schiff is currently still investigating Trump. See, now they're going from Russia collusion, which is pretty much you don't hear about that anymore. And now they're going to start digging into his finances and, uh, and business dealings. So uh, until they get concrete evidence, that they can impeach him, they have to take it off the table. But what then, uh, the question has to be raised, what was it that persuaded them all these months and months ago that it looked like they had the makings of a case for impeachment? Uh, the because Mueller it wasn't just about It wasn't just about one charge. It was about a whole bunch of things this president was doing, abuse of power, uh, we had lies, we had uh, the uh, violation of many constitutional proscriptions against abuse of power, all these things. It wasn't just one charge. They were contemplating and they were sure up until, well, of course, two days ago, that they were on course. What do you think happened? Um, uh, again, I, I am of the uh, mindset that although um, people are, uh, are unhappy with the way he has been running uh, the country, the main uh, evidence that they were going to use to impeach him was the colluding with Russians to gain mm -hmm. uh, a favor, uh, you know, pretty much to de delegitimize his pre presidency and uh, uh, now that the Mueller report has turned up nothing as far as anything that uh, directly connects to Trump, I mean, he, they've, they've arrested Cohen, Manafort, all kinds of other people have gone to jail, but nothing has directly connected anything to Trump to Russia. So now they have to go back to the drawing board and they're going to dig into his finances uh, and and try to find something in there that's going to be big enough to delegitimize him uh, from being president. So is that what Nancy Pelosi means by it's not worth it to embark on this uh, fishing expedition? At this time, it's not worth it to uh, uh, impeach him at this time. I do believe they are going to attempt to impeach him in the future if further investigations provide any evidence for him to be impeached. Okay. You make a solid argument. I don't know if, if uh, I agree, but I can't disagree with you. <laughs> you make it very hard for me to disagree with you today. Thank you so much for calling in and contributing. Ed, Ed from Queens. What could account, what could possibly account for these two Democratic leaders who have been on the sniffing trail for months and making it clear that they were on the, the, the trail called impeachment, suddenly deciding without yeah, any further explanation that it's, as Pelosi said, it's not worth it. Hello. Good afternoon, Eutrice. How are you doing? Okay, Ed. How are you doing? I'm good. Um, to be totally honest with you, I don't believe they ever were going to impeach Donald Trump. I mean, um, I just don't think they, they – it was just a lot of rhetoric. It was a lot of uh, 
it sounded good at the time, and now that the, the chickens are coming home to roost, I think there's two major problems with it. Number one, I don't believe that they can actually prove collusion. I think there's innuendos of collusion, but I don't think they actually have the, the ironclad proof to bring it through. Number two, these Republicans are insane, and, and, and they will never, they, they need at least the, at least the Senate. They, the House can bring the charges, but the Senate is needed to, to actually prosecute. And the Republicans will never do that. They're going to follow. They're going to go to the grave with this guy, unless it's something like atrocious. I mean, even he said it himself. He could go down in Times Square and shoot somebody, and they still wouldn't impeach him or indict him. So, there, there are a lot of there's a small fringe of fanatical Americans that actually believe this man can walk on water. And I don't think that uh, Pelosi wants to take the opportunity to to risk impeaching him and fail. So I don't think they ever planned to do it. I mean, they made a lot of talk about it. They they raised a lot of hallelujah because it sounded good. But I don't think they ever planned to really push the push the issue and impeach him. Are there criminal charges that exist? I believe so. I believe there's embezzlement charges. There's financial charges that eventually will come out as far as how much he's done for the powers that be for what you want to call the deep state or the ruling class, how much he has done as far as the tax rebates and, and those things, that will protect him to a certain extent. If there's some ex- extensive criminal charges, I don't know. I don't see him being prosecuted after he's voted out in 2020. I think everybody's counting on the fact that he's not going to make it past 2020. And I just don't believe that uh, the old guard Democrats have the stomach or, or the way it will fall to really push impeachment. I think it sounded good. But now that the chickens are coming home to roost, they're backing out. And that's what I think this is. But was collusion the only reason that they embarked on this uh, exercise to uh, explore impeachment? Well, it's what they pushed. I mean, but if you look at the the actual writing for impeachment, it's it's corruption, it's, it's lack of moral perpetuity, corruption, high crimes and misdemeanors. High crimes and misdemeanors are the last two things that you can impeach a president for. If they really want to impeach him, he's corrupt. He has no moral fiber. I mean, you know, he's totally corrupt. It goes without saying, even before he became uh, president, uh, before he became selected president of the United States, his corruption is, is known. He has no moral fiber. He's an adulterer. He's a philanderer. He, 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 and he brags about it. So, I mean, on those statutes alone, you could have pushed for impeachment. And they didn't. The collusion sounded good. I mean, if they could find irrefutable evidence, like some type of tape that was mentioned in the beginning or some type of file or something, I, I think they, they would have no choice to go for it because that would force the Republicans' hands. But right now it's just smoke and mirrors. I don't think anything substantial enough has been found to push uh, impeachment on those grounds. And like I said, I don't think they ever – I don't. I think from the beginning they were never going to – really impeach him. I think it was just a lot of talk. It sounded good. Now everybody's putting their hopes on 2020. But, you know, that is embarrassing because, okay, let's say they have had a change of heart. Mm -hmm. Well, what about the the views of the rest of the party? They are still here that, that there are impeachable offenses that this president has committed. And that they should pursue, you know, just fleshing these out some more because they're quite serious, including taxes and decisions having to do with deployment of soldiers and all kinds of other things other than collusion. That was not the be all and end all of the the, the central basis of the charge or charges, but that the charges included a broad spectrum of abuses by the president, uh, the lying, the misrepresentations, the the tax problems, uh, and cronyism, and a lot of other things that were going on. So Mm -hmm. when two people in the Democratic Party essentially cancel out what others in the party at least from from their actions and their statements, 
uh, had taken seriously as a mission with regard to uh, uh, Donald Trump and taking him on, what does that do, do you think, to the party? Well, the party has done it to itself. The party is fractionated. The party is fractionated, and and when you're really dirty, when you're when you're just as dirty as the guy you're trying to call dirty, it becomes an issue of the pot calling the kettle black. And I think that's really what it is. There's so much of uh, influence of mon- monetary influence. There's so much corruption in Washington D.C. as in that of itself that even though our, this president is a blatant a blatant outstanding uh, uh, a circumstance of corruption. The other corruptions that go on don't allow these people to have the moral don't don't allow these people to have the what they call this testicular fortitude to make an honest uh, claim at justice and try to put this man on the cross. They can't do it because they're dirty themselves. I think that there's too much corruption, and and, and they they rather just let this die. So their corruption can remain hidden, and, and, and hopefully this guy will go away in 2020 and we'll be able to move on with, unfortunately, what they're looking at as business as usual. I think that's it. I think it, it sounded good. It looked good to say, hey, look at him. He's lousy. He's terrible. But then when you got a, when you point a finger at somebody, you got four fingers pointing back at yourself. And if they really started to hit him and everything starts to come out, I think they couldn't stand the, they couldn't stand the light of day. So it's a, it's a mutual exception for total corruption, unfortunately. That's what this wow. government has come to in my eyes. Oh, so what does this do to loyal Democrats who, when this was announced, that they were going to look into the possibility of impeachment of the president, and not just the two of them, but many other Democrats had publicly voiced uh, a view that this is what the party ought to do, challenge Donald Trump uh, with impeachment. And now, well, what do you think this this development might have done to the view of the larger community of Democrats? Well, unfortunately, I think it's going to cause a lot of disillusionment. I think it's going to be an issue for them with the large field of uh, possible nominees that are in the picture now. I think there's like 18 or 20 people running for the Democratic nomination for president. And, and it's going to show a lack of consolidation. It's prime time for a third party. I mean, I, I know it's, it's a little short notice, but uh, it, this could be the, the, the groundswell for the development of a, of a viable third party because people are becoming disillusioned. And uh, you know we've got false promises. We've got we've got democratic uh, democratic uh, for, uh, founders of the party flipping and, and 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 stumbling and trying to cover their own butts. So I mean, this could be uh, uh, the only thing that has these concerned is that with so much division, it stands that this guy could get another term, get a, could get another four years, and that's the only thing that really gives me pause because we don't want him for another four years, but with this division, with the wishy-washiness, with the saying, okay, we're going to impeach, we got him, we got him, we got him. Now, when the investigations are finally coming to closure and evidence is going to be presented, ah, you know, it's too much trouble. We're going to, I mean, come on, that 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 besmirches anything you're trying to do. So it's time, it's been a long, high time for a third party, but this might be the nail that, that really drives it home for the people. Because I don't think the people are going to have any respect for the Democratic Party at large. I know I don't personally. Well, thank you. Thanks thank for you. your contribution today, Ed. We go next to Delaware. Emilio, you're on the air. Yeah, hi, you, Trace. Hi. Yeah, um, yeah, I, I kind of, I think the reason, um, the timing, as far as the timing on, the statements by Pelosi and Schiff are because I agree with most of the callers that um, there's nothing that implicates Trump in terms of collusion with uh, the Russian to win the, uh, the presidency. But uh, as far as the, the, the story, I think the story itself was concocted by the Democratic Party to distract from 
all of the failures and all the corruption during the actual um, the primaries and the uh, the contest itself. Um, the Democratic Party has never accounted for any of that. They needed to um, focus attention on something else because. Uh, if they would have really accounted for all of this stuff that happened that they uh, that they did, for example, to Bernie Sanders uh, and with the superdelegates and all that to, to kind of uh, make uh, Hillary the uh, the uh, the nominee, um, I think that uh, they would have been very humiliated and embarrassed and they weren't willing to go through that. I think they should have. I think from the very beginning, that was the, the whole point of coming up with this uh, this uh, Russia-Trump collusion. And I think but that they've done we, a very we good learned, job. Uh, we learned over the course of time, from the between the time they started and fairly recently, that collusion was not the only reason to explore uh, impeaching president, impeaching the president. No, I'm not saying that that the MP, I, I don't think they want to. I, I kind of agree with Ed. I, I think it was Ed that said that they were never going to impeach him anyway. I think they just needed something to distract, uh, especially the Democrats, uh, from the real reason why um, Hillary lost the election. Uh, I think that a lot of Democrats. I used to be a Democrat. I uh, didn't want her to uh, to be president for a lot of reasons. And uh, a lot of people um, did not go to the polls or decided they were going to vote for the Green Party, which I did, because there was no way I was going to vote for Trump, but I wasn't going to vote for Hillary either. But when those WikiLeaks emails came out and they implicated people like Podesta and uh, I don't remember the female um, Wasserman and uh, those four very high people up in the DNC, they had to resign. Um, they thought that that was going to put an end to it. At least in my eyes, it did. And I think the whole purpose of the, the, the this talk about impeachment, in my eyes, was to just distract people. I, that, that's what I firmly believe. I believe that from the very beginning. Um, as far as other reasons to impeach him, I'm sure that there may be other reasons to impeach him. But I don't think that they're willing to go through that. I agree with most of the callers that... Um, they're just hoping that in 2020 that he's going to lose. But I, I wouldn't put, I, I would not count Trump out. I would not count Trump out. What does this do, in your view? You said you were a Democrat. Presumably you no longer are. But what right. does this do to the, the faith of a typical Democrat in the party leadership that supposedly says what it means and means what it says. Well, um, you know, that's one of the reasons why I'm not, I'm not a Democrat, but um, they, they uh, I, I guess it would, again, disillusion. It, you know, if you haven't already left the, the Democratic Party, here's another reason why you should. Um, to me, it just, it just puts, it has more fuel to the fire for someone to say, you know what, I, I think it's time for third party. I don't agree with that in terms of, you know, third party. I don't think it's time because you got to build that third party. Um, and I don't think it's going to happen by 2020. But what it can do is start chipping away at that Democratic base. I finally believe that people have to walk away from the Democratic Party. And uh, once they do that, you know, you give your power to the party. I don't know. I don't. People don't seem to understand that. They have no power without you. So with you, you give them your power. If we all decided we didn't want to be part of the Democratic Party anymore, then we'd, we'd either get them, A, to change, or B, we'd get something else to take its place. Um, but if you're a Democrat and you see what's going on and you see what happened here with this, uh, with this spending two years focused on trying to get Trump out of office, while there's, there's so many other things that we could have focused on and taken care of, I think that they've accomplished their mission. The, 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 the DNC, the, the, the leadership of the Democratic Party, has gotten everybody thinking that uh, for the last two years that, that um, Hillary lost because of Trump, when in reality the Democrats lost because their, 
they, I, I can't think of the word right now, but uh, they're just clueless, I think. I, I think they're not very organized. Uh, they're clueless. Um, they don't really represent the working people anymore. Um, they're just uh, like, I mean, your, your listeners know they're just, the, the, you know, just, they're just like the Republican Party, but on social, socially they tend to be a little bit more liberal and uh, they play the identity politics. But when it comes to the, the really the things that really matter, like like health care and employment and war and all those kinds of things, they're just like the Republicans. So to answer your question, the short thing would be they, they, sh- they would be disillusioned, angry. And, and that so much time was invested in, in, in trying to get Trump impeached for that reason, that, um, that, that, that uh, I would be very angry. Let's just put it that way. Well, you just had uh, Pelosi scoring a major triumph over Trump with, uh, you know, the showdown over the wall. Um, and you had Schiff nipping at his heels all this time. What now do we think about them? What are we supposed to, to feel about them as uh, key people in the struggle against uh, the Trump administration as leaders of the party? And now this about face with no further explanation other than, well, we don't think it's going to be worth it. I mean, how are we supposed to think about this leadership? And should it be challenged? Should they be thrown out? Well, I'm going to be very honest because, um, you know, I I don't really look at these particular things, these actions, as changing my mind in in, in any way, because I've already made up my mind that... um, that these people are not there to seriously change anything. Pelosi, for example, I mean, especially her, um, she's the status quo. So I, I long ago have realized that, and I, I put most of my emphasis and focus on on uh, people like Ocasio, people like Tulsi Gabbard, uh, people that uh, are, are really trying to change things. Um, so... As far as what Pelosi does, she's a wounded warrior, just like Schiff is. And as far as what they do, it really doesn't matter to me because I don't really see them as the future of the Democratic Party. They're, they're part of, uh, uh, of something that, that should have died a long time ago. Um, that, that's the only way I can put it, Eutrice. I, I, I don't know how else to say it. I mean, I, I've gotten off that, that bandwagon a long time ago. You did a great job. Thanks so much for giving us yet another dimension of the story. And, you know, the thing that burned me up is, you know, it was just said in a kind of offhanded way as she was walking down the hallway, uh, and she told the reporters, oh, I'm going to make news. And uh, Mm -hmm. then comes the statement that it's not worth it going after Trump going after Trump to, uh, yeah. uh, to impeach him. And then shortly mm-hmm. after that, we have Schiff making his statement. Mm-hmm. I said, this, is, mm-hmm. uh, this can't possibly be coincidental. Something is happening no. here, and we need to start asking some questions about it. Absolutely. But thank you so much, Emilio, for your okay. input today. Thank you so much. Let's go to Georgia next. And uh, that's where we find Donald. Hotel Beatrice. Thank you, Hotel. Look here, I'm, I admit I am crazy. I think about some of the wildest things. So. <laughs> if, that's how you start off. I admit I am crazy. If if you think I'm too far, I'll just hang up on me. But I've been thinking about the same thing since Nancy Pelosi said that, and. I, I, one thing keeps ding, dangling in, in my mind. Trump trumps uh, people, and the, the head person in Congress said, well, I take her, head, take her at her word. Now, it makes me believe that maybe Trump, maybe they know Trump is not going to run in 2020. Nobody knows what's in Mueller's thing, but it seems to be a consensus that Mueller is dealing, and, and the attorney in New York is dealing in Trump's 
finances, and they're stepping close to his kids. And I think that's kind of putting extreme fear in Trump. And I think he's he's really weighing on whether to run and not to run. Plus, what made me think about that, I think some of the, the conservatives of the Republican Party, I was listening and halfway asleep, but I heard him say, we, we, don't like, we don't like Pence. We don't want Pence to be the next president. So I think it might, might have something to do with him running in 2020, just maybe deciding not to run. And I, and I think Pelosi knows, knows that. Point number two is I also think Pelosi knows that her time is, is, is running thin. If, if this election uh, brings about more progressives, well, then she's in deep trouble because right now the, the progressives have bucked, has bucked her one or two times already. And if they get more clout, she, she may not be the top dog in, uh, after 2020. She may not be the top dog. That's, but wouldn't, my... um, wouldn't this, you know, if, if they had proceeded as they said they were on this, uh, the line of impeachment, would this not have brought to both Pelosi and Schiff and especially to the Democratic Party a great deal more clout at precisely the time that they and the party need it? Yeah, but uh, they're not concerned about the party. They're concerned about their control over the party. And, and they're owned by the, the oligarchs, what you want to call them oligarchs, are rural elite. So they're doing what their masters are telling them to do. Uh, as, as once before, I think I think I think I, I never liked Pelosi. You know, I think she's all for herself, all for her interests. She's trying to make things cushiony when when she leaves her her and the, what a, a guy's name. But they don't care about the Democratic Party. It's it's, it's just a vehicle for him to enrich themselves. That's all. When them young, those young folks, those young bucks and, and females warriors coming in, that's giving her, that's, that's making her nervous. Everybody said, um, I mean, on Chris Matthews' show, when Pelosi was elected to be uh, head of the uh, the party, once again, he said, oh, Nancy, Nancy got them under control. See how skillful she was? But when they bucked her, when the cashier on them bucked her, and when when that lady in, in Mississippi, uh, not Mississippi, Minnesota, when she said the same things about uh, Israeli policy as she said, and refused to back down and double down, Pelosi Pelosi kind of took note of that and said, "Oh, oh, you know, maybe this is my my time is up. Maybe I need to bow gracefully." Same thing with Schiff. Same thing with Trump. But this you is know, not a it, graceful bow out. Uh, this. If it this is not bowing out gracefully, if anything, it it connotes fear of some sort. It proves that there is a divide in the party. Yeah, when but, but, you have a lot of people in the party, you know, thinking that the next big brawl that they're going to have and the next uh, big fight to put Trump out of our misery is, you know, the, the impeachment. And then we have two leaders of the party saying, forget it. Right, right. That, right. I, I agree with you, with you that we don't think it's a bow, but the way the pundits will put a spin on it, if she decides to leave instead of getting put out, where well, they going to put a spin on it? It all depends on how they can spin it. That's what she's looking at. Mm-hmm. So, is this a net gain or a net loss, or is no particular impact on the Democratic Party at this point? Well, I, 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 I'm not a Democrat, okay, but but I, I say this: anything when these anything time you can get some new blood, young blood, positive young blood in the party, I think it's a net gain. It it it, it may it may be a negative effect short term, but I think in the long term it'd be, it'd be good for the, for the Democratic Party. It'd be good for the Republican Party. It'd be good for the Independent Party. It'd be good for the nation. 
because you have a new blood come in with with very creative ideas. The mere fact that 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 uh, they're even talking about socialism now, it, it to me to me, it's something good. You know, not that it's a cure all this that and other, but they they're talking about something new, something 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 that's different from this damn two party system, something that's different from 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 capitalism. It might be it might be uh, that someone else talk about something different than socialism, a mix of this, a mix of that. I think that's good. I think that's real good. So now we we left with a wreckage, in a way, because the party has done to itself a great deal of damage by first giving people the impression they're moving in one direction, and now comes the uh, about face and. Then, on top of that, no real explanation. So it leaves the Democrats uh, it, to it come up with their own interpretation of what just happened here. It leaves the Democrats in disarray, which is something I like. I wish, I wish it just fractured, fractured all the pieces and rebuild. People rebuild something else. I, I, I really, right now, I'm kind of gleeful at, at what's happening. I'm kind of gleeful. I, I do not like the direction that the Democrats have taken. I, I long, long, long ago wished that the party was fractured. I long ago wished that. That's why I left the party a long time ago. Uh, as for one, I'm like, like Claude Anderson. I don't believe voting would do anything for you unless you have power to begin with. So I'm glad to see the Democrats fraction. They haven't done nothing for black folks in 50 years. Now they put your President Obama. The only person that did something for black folks is, is, is Johnson, and he had keen put pressure on him. So, so no, I, I like to see the party fractured. I like to see this whole system fractured. Well, that's a great, a very different view. And I yeah. thank you for contributing that view to us today to give us another dimension of thought about what just happened and seemed to be what is being made to seem to be a matter of, uh, you know, Democratic Party leaders making a decision and then moving forward. No big deal. This is not a big deal. Don't think about it as a big deal. Just keep moving on. Thank you so much, Donald, for your contribution today. From Chicago, Henry, what's going on? What are your thoughts hey. about the subject? Uh, hi, Idris. How you doing? Okay, thank you. All right. Um, just to, I guess, uh, my thoughts on it, and I'm thinking it. I'm thinking in a more recent historical view, uh, with Donald Trump uh, not getting funding for his wall, which was spearheaded by Nancy Pelosi. Uh, I think that was more of a power play, and basically. It's just the realization that Nancy Pelosi has the upper hand over Donald Trump. So it doesn't matter if he's president or not. She's going to have the final say. So basically that situation kind of hangs over Donald Trump's head that he took a big L in that in that budget uh, uh, government shutdown thing. So I think Pelosi just realizes, hey, I don't need him impeach. He can stay in however we want to. I'm just going to make his life a living hell. So, I mean, that's kind of like my take on it. Uh, I think she's just made a power play uh, in, you know, in Congress. And basically, uh, and just like with everybody else, I think she's also fractured the Democratic Party as well. But I don't think she cares about that. She cares about herself, and she is in a, in a, in a position of power right now. But even so, uh, that means that the party is weak. If it doesn't have the resiliency, if it doesn't have within it the strength to say, to keep your leader in line, because the decision to, pers to pursue uh, impeachment wasn't a casual one. A lot of the, the elected officials, I'm sure, carefully explored all kinds of reasons, all kinds of grounds on which uh, it should proceed. 
we mm-hmm. we shared with you on the this particular program the testimony, and I remarked about it back then. You you saw the friction and the division when uh, Congressman Al Green from Texas uh, went to the floor to make his statements regarding grounds for impeachment of the President of the United States. Collusion with Russia was not among them. He talked about real life reasons that this president uh, will have no defense or very little defense against the charges that he raised. Corruption and cronyism and uh, questions about his budget, how he's using it and abusing it, all uh, abuse of authority. These are the points that he raised. He never talked about collusion with Russia. He talked Mm -hmm. about dereliction of duty as a president of the United States. So I don't get it that both Schiff and Pelosi, who weren't, you know, they weren't a team before, uh, are now both convinced that it isn't in the best interest of the party to proceed with uh, getting this president uh, indicted for charges and proceeding with the whole uh, effort to get him out of office using this method, you know, uh, of, of Congress to get him out. But so I have to ask, in your view, what happened here? What is happening? Well, and, and don't get me wrong. You, you, uh, this, this aggressiveness that I, well, let me say this. Well, this thing with them pursuing uh, impeachment charges against Trump, I, I honestly think they weren't serious about it. I think it was all a show because the Democratic Party took a, a huge beating in the 2016 election. So it was basically a show because, you know, you just you just uh, talked about Al Green. He was standing there by himself uh-huh. when he was, you know, talking about these impeachments, which, make, which made me think at that point that that party wasn't serious about impeaching Donald Trump. They just wanted to be relevant. They just wanted to be in the conversation because of the fact that they took a beating in that, in that presidential election. So now... You, you come up now to a point where you had the midterms and the Democrats had made some strides in getting the House. Uh, they still don't have the Senate, which means that they, they basically don't have enough to impeach Donald Trump legally anyway. But now with this, like I said, I think it was all about Nancy Pelosi. She has slithered her way back into, you know, uh, the House Speaker because – uh, I remember when uh, the House Speaker uh, position was up, there were a lot of Democrats who were, you know, against it. But she happened to slither her way back into it. And now she has some sort of advantage over Donald Trump. I think, like I said, the wall thing was one thing. There's something else there that I, I'm not, I can't put my finger on that, that's there as well. But I, I just think that the impeachment process or the impeachment talk as I as I say uh, with the Democrats, it was just talk, just to make them relevant in the conversation. I must ask you this question: Do mm-hmm. you see an element here of the decision by Pelosi and Schiff essentially underscoring a racial rift within the party? The vast majority, it seems, of uh, Members of the party are pro uh, impeachment, and here we have two white leaders, basically out of nowhere, and presumably without discussion, just dismissing this growing uh, interest in challenging Donald Trump via impeachment. Oh, I mean, yes, I, I I believe that a lot of the people of color uh, within the party are very upset at this. But like I said, I don't think Nancy Pelosi cares about that. 
and I don't think she cares about the Democratic Party because uh, now she, you know, what they what she did is she actually used the party to her advantage to get the seat that she wanted. So I don't think she cares about that, and I don't, and I think this 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 other guy, uh, oh man, what is his name? The 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 guy we were just mentioning in the conversation, um, uh, uh, Adam Schiff. Yeah, Adam Schiff. Yeah, I mean, I think she's just kind of bringing him along uh, because he was, you know, so he was the, I, I guess he was kind of like the front man of this whole Trump investigation where, you know, uh, now it's like she doesn't need to, she doesn't need Donald Trump impeached no more. She she has obtained some sort of power in there, and I don't think she cares about the the uh, the, the, the rift in the Democratic Party right now. So where do you expect things to go? I mean, this, do you, for, let me ask you first, do you regard this as a major development within the party? Oh, yes. I, 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 I very much think this is a major development because, like I said, I think Nancy Pelosi has seated herself in a powerful position now. Yeah, but what does that say about all the other folks who are members of the party? And well, without it, whom... And without support from whom, Pelosi isn't going to go anywhere. Well, I mean, it, it basically it basically says <laughs> you're on your own. <laughs> I got mine. You got to get yours. But mm -hmm. yeah, I I just I just don't think that uh, she cares about the party right now. Wow. Did you think you you mentioned that? they didn't take this issue of impeachment seriously, who would you say are the they? The they was the Democratic Party. You know, they were always yeah, talking but about... Which, which faction, which group within the party didn't take this seriously? Well, I would, I would probably say majority of, of, of the white Democrats didn't really take it seriously. Uh, because like I said... I know there were, you know, the Black Caucus was talking about it, but you didn't hear much out of, you know, the white Democrats, you know, saying much about it. They they, they might have mentioned it, but, you know, it was majority of the Black Caucus who was, you know, calling for impeachment. And like I said, and, and in a sense, they were talking about it, but I don't think they were very real about it because uh, – it, 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 and when Al Green went up to do that, to do those articles of impeachment, he should have had a crowd of Democrats right next to him, but he didn't. We talked about that, uh, mm -hmm. but I don't think it was necessarily uh, a flaw of his. I think it was cowardice. I think it was a reticence on the part of the members of the Black Caucus who did not want to offend the party leadership. Yeah, uh, but it was a time. poignant moment, I thought. Here is uh, Green I mean, <laughs> doing his best to make a case. And, you know, you would expect after a presentation like that, that some people would come and give him a pat on the back saying good job or a handshake or something. But nothing like that happened. Well, we have to person. leave it there. But finish your thought and then we no. say goodbye. No, no, no. That, that's what I want to say. Al Green was the only serious person, but he is not the total Democratic Party. Correct. <laughs> well, at least we did our job. We raised a question, and hopefully we'll continue to raise it in order to arrive at some kind of answer, some kind of rationale for this crazy, irrational move on the part of Pelosi and Schiff. Thanks a lot, Henry. Good to hear from you. It's good to hear from everybody because your, your thinking is at such a high level. I can't tell you how proud I, I feel when you, when you stretch out. Thanks so much. We'll see you tomorrow. Bye-bye.